My name is Tim Lewis, and I'm a documentary filmmaker. I'm a third generation Oregonian, and I've grown up here in Eugene. And a bunch of us have always thought about having a film festival. And nobody really got off our butts to really put in the heavy lifting. But uh, Michelle and all these women have done that this year and put on the first annual Eugene Environmental Film Festival. And we're right in the middle of it right now, and it's kicking some serious butt. And it's amazing that uh, this is happening in such a, a terrific way this weekend. Um, Eugene is one of the best places in the United States to have an environmental film festival because here in the Northwest there's still all these wild places and Eugene is also at a base, is a base for lots of radical environmentalism and uh, that's been around here for decades and so it only makes sense to continue on this annual environmental film festival here in Eugene that these women started. So everybody needs to come back next year in the second annual and uh, have a great time, drink some beer, smoke some ganja, and party down and be enlightened by all these filmmakers' work. Thanks. Hi, my name is Hap Kindem. I'm a uh, retired filmmaker and film professor from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Uh, I'm here at the film festival because my film, Incredible Animals, Galapagos, uh, was selected to be shown here. We had a wonderful time. It's a well-organized film festival. The people, and one of the reasons I'm here, because people like Michelle Eggers and others were uh, uh, very encouraging about coming, extremely helpful and outgoing. Uh, I've had a wonderful time. My film is entitled Incredible Animals Galapagos, a wildlife sanctuary. It, uh, it's a film about how wonderful uh, the animals throughout the Galapagos are, what incredible biodiversity uh, we have, and yet how threatened it is by us, by humankind, both through climate change and the impact on food supply, the warming temperatures of the ocean, uh, by visitors to the Galapagos like myself, and things that we bring with us, sometimes unknowingly, that are non-indigenous species of plants and animals that affect the indigenous animals uh, in the Galapagos, and by fishing, overfishing, illegal fishing, um, and the extermination in the past and to some degree in the present of sharks and other species in the oceans. My name is Carolo Aparicio. I'm executive director of Ecoviva. Ecoviva is a nonprofit organization based in Oakland that is working at the intersection of um, environmental protection and, um, uh, and economic justice. We work in, in, mostly in El Salvador uh, and Honduras. So we're here at the, um, at the film festival um, with a film that was directed by, by Jake Ratner and it's called uh, Resilience at the Roots. So Jake came down to El Salvador with us um, to film the story of, um, of this community-based initiative to um, protect and restore the mangrove forests of El Salvador. So that's how we, we got involved with, uh, with the festival. Uh, have you gotten to see any, uh, any other films since you got here? Yes, uh, I have gotten to see a few other, a few other films. Uh, I thought that the, um, the section that our film was in was really well crafted and curated. Um, it really brought together the theme of the importance of, um, of wetlands and of wild, wild places and the interaction of, um, of people and community-based initiatives to protect these these beautiful places. Uh, so, obviously, a lot of people have been talking about the environment, really going back to the early, well, for ancient times, but 1960s and the environmental movement. Of course, we had women's movement, civil rights movement. How do you feel this festival and the message of the environment is not only still pertinent, but even more important these days that you're, you're committed to making these films on the topics. Absolutely, and I also think that this conversation about the environment needs to really be inclusive and bring together all these different strands that, that you just mentioned. 
about the women's movement, about, um, about issues of economic justice, issues of fairness. You know, and the environmental movement can't continue to live in isolation. It needs to bring in all of these different strands in order to, to really usher in a, a new era of, uh, of, of really trying to preserve, preserve the environment and create a, a sense of economic justice for people. So my name is Yolanda Gomez. I'm um, on the board of directors at Beyond Toxics here in Eugene, Oregon. And I'm currently an MFA student at OSU Cascades. Um, um, so at the event today, we were holding space um, for an open mic and um, for environmental justice issues um, related to um, disability rights, food access, racial justice, um, uh, things of that nature that are kind of generally left out of the conversation of environmental justice. It's not just, as I had mentioned earlier, about saving our bees and saving polar bears, but there are actual issues currently happening um, in Eugene, Oregon, just in our own neighborhoods that need addressing. Um, uh, so that's very important to me and part of the work that we do as an anti-racist organization. Um, inspired. I think a lot of the times we think of the word diversity as being um, a part of environmental activism. It's not. It's very whitewashed. Um, it's very exclusive. And if we could just bring it back into it being black, about black and brown um, issues um, and marginalized voices, actually privileging marginalized voices is, is um, key, I think, to creating change. Right. All right. Thanks for your time. Hi, my name is Dylan, and I'm here at the Eugene Environmental Film Festival. And our films are Plastic is Forever and Tipping Point. My name is Dawn DeHaze, I'm a producer. We have Rock Island Media, that's our company. And we help Dylan uh, produce these films. Dylan's a director and cameraman, and I taught him how to make these films as a school project. And amazingly, it's been in 35 film festivals around the world, and translated into Spanish and Italian, and it is continuing on uh, around the world in the Ocean Film Festival circuit. And she's my mom. Okay. And I'm Dylan's mom. So, Dylan, um, you could make a documentary or a film about anything. Why are you passionate about the topic you particularly picked on Plastic is Forever? Well, I guess the main reason is uh, my mom and I were driving up through the West Coast and like up through California and uh, while we were driving up uh, I was seeing a lot of plastic trash on the beaches and exhibits about it in um, the aquariums and I got really stressed out and scared about it and to the point I wouldn't even I didn't even want to go into the exhibits and my mom saw this and she was talking to me outside of the aquarium and she said well instead of being afraid you should do something about it so we decided to make a documentary film uh, showing ways that kids in their daily lives can help uh, stop the problem kids have a lot more power than they think they have and uh, our film is here to help inspire them and uh, make them feel more confident to make the daily changes in their life to save the planet. Kids can save the planet. Kids can make a difference. <laughs> Independence, a critical essence of life. I'm Lake Bodaka working harder to provide. You're gonna endanger me? Release the crocodiles and snakes. I'll make boots, belts, wallets, and jewelry just to get paid. You feel what you ain't, so you point and bang, or so you point and bang, addicted to the venom while the needles are kissing veins, an imbalanced brain that can't maintain. It screams and more, it fiends for more, it, no freedom, man. It's hooked in the game, damn, I see it's pain. I can't walk away, I gotta break the cycle. Negativity needs to be recycled, and to depressants got you feeling down, don't be like Michael. Got you feeling cycle, what do I know? I'm just a kid from a barrio, but I've seen addictions, how's evictions, fresh convicted, but it's not sufficient. They gather an army of dummies plus girls pretend to be barbers, it's like a lot of me. I've seen the way they make that money, selling pills has prescriptions. The richest land making bad decisions, but I'm in no position, but I see the vision. It's all about the money and the power. Making millions in an hour, while no one souls devour. Let them scream louder. 
Now watch the crowd as it moves, brainwashing, I see that voodoo. But who knew this evil would trick me and you? Slicks to the paper, dreams become vapor. Mm. We puppets, the masterminds, don't pull strings, no push buttons, but they still get paid. Mm. Then it goes into the hood. <laughs> <laughs> first things first, I'll always best myself. Rest is when I see my eyes, it's always money on my mind, I gotta keep on grinding. I'm just a dirty diamond trying to shine. Money is mine, but my time is money. I'm hungry, starving. Funny, my battery is energized by a bunny. To keep going and going is my game plan, buddy. Honey is sweet, only if you got a squad of bees and a breeze to fulfill the queen's needs. Look here. Our bigger brother is the beekeeper, leaving us with nothing like the grain rip, but let me tell you something, it gets deeper. We enslaved to this pay, minimum wage is a waste. Routines are cut and paste, it's all the same. We're looking for that change. These days are strange, like people are targets they aim, no one to blame. Now I'll show you how to spark fire to flame. And just like that, we get paid. Cool. Uh, my name is Colby Elliott. I'm from Northern California, and I'm a filmmaker. I have a film in the Eugene Environmental Film Festival, and it's been an awesome experience coming here. Um, everybody's super nice and uh, super welcoming, and and yeah, Eugene is a, a cool city and I'm glad that there's something right. happening I'll like this in, in the town. So. And uh, real quickly, what was your film about? Uh, my film was uh, kind of an abstract on uh, the beautiful places that we get to see as kayakers. And uh, so I'm a whitewater kayaker and we get to go to some really cool canyons and some really cool places. and not everybody gets to see those places so so that was kind of my take on on some cool canyons and places that people don't get to see every day hello my name is Eric Dura and i'm here at the Eugene Oregon Environmental Film Festival with my film Bison Nation Walking Sacred Sites and um, I'm very thrilled because it's an environmental film festival so my film really fits very well because it's about the last migratory bison in the northern hemisphere and that is a topic that's very pertinent for right now because these animals are still instinctual and they know where they're going, where to find water and uh, they're very important to the native people so having them back and their return is very ins um, inspiring and exciting for the challenges we are facing right now. Uh, how did you get interested in being a filmmaker? I have seen um, nature and wildlife documentaries before, even as a child or as a young adult, and I never liked the way they were being done because it was about the animals. Uh, with us at the top of the pyramid, talking about them and interpreting their um, lives through our cultural lenses. And I never liked that. The kind of do, 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 mama wolf is mad because papa wolf came home late last night. So I decided to not do that and to do my own wildlife um, documentaries with the animals as a co-production. So the bison film, as my wolf film that I did about the Mexican gray wolves, um, are, are examples of that. It's a co-production. So uh, in the time we have, I know that you work um, in your film, you talked a lot about being communicating as a narrator at, from the perspective of the buffalo, yes. or the bison. Yeah. So could you talk a little bit um, about the time we're in animal communication and what message are these animals wanting to impart to people? Yeah, this is a beautiful question. Thank you so very much. I've been an animal and all life form communicator my whole life. And um, I'm taking it straight from the horse's mouth, basically. I'm not interpreting anything. So the animals, it, with a bison film, I had been migrating with them and tenting in on the prairie forever and I was really ready to finish the film but the message I got from them was you're not getting it yet you know wait a minute wait a minute so what I did was I meditated I got out of the way and I wrote the script and afterwards I cried because I could have never written that script 
because what they really wanted was they wanted to tell their own story and that's what happened. I know that I'm not the only one communicating with the animals and other life forms, but it hasn't been um, culturally very much accepted in the past. So I encourage everybody who do, does have a connection to the animals and the natural world and who is communicating with that world to keep going and to know that it's real and to not feel strange about it and to really hone in on those skills because they're very much needed. So if you are an animal and um, you know, species communicator, as I call it, please keep going. They're reaching out to us right now. They want to be with us and they want to um, impart their wisdom. And it's very much needed because they have been around a lot longer than we have and they have been through a lot of climate change and through a lot of cha uh, changing worlds and they know what they're doing. So it's important to talk to them. My name is Steve Connolly. Uh, I'm a teacher at Echo High School. And this is a poem about NAFTA. I got the neoliberal blues. I'm busting out cues. You know, I'm writing my rhymes and I'm paying my dues. I gotta take this rhyme. I'm headed straight for the border. Skinny wages head south for social disorder. Young girls free to work hard. Her brother's playing in shit in new millennium homes. Can you get with it? The fat corporations flat script that law with their culture box junk. Yo, do you see what I saw? Supreme Court nod and G-dub with a slack jaw. They got it all sewed up with one big flaw. And that's you and me in our community. Flexing fat rhymes will force history. The metaphor is our weapon of war. We can't sit down, you know our feet are sore. We're gonna rise up with one big voice and tell the people, yo, you got a choice because your hard work paid for his Rolls Royce. Now I want to claim that I'm a media bandit, I swing a metaphoric left and I land it. They got the poor people solo, you know they planned it. They took Hitler's playbook and they flat scanned it as the neoliberal soldiers protect the priests' riches with Friedman, Pinochet and Ray Gun and Stitches. They call it free trade but it's a vicious charade. Folks working really hard, they barely get paid. They got border town street sewage on parade. Yo, there ain't nothing free about your market. Take your broke dick philosophy and park it. This whole system is poison to their culture. Each dirty factory is a soul mulcher. Each corporation is just a vulture as we poison the lives of the people with brown skin. If you say it ain't so, I gotta ask you where the hell you been? Surrounded by the product and living in sin. That's it. Hi, my name is Melissa Pedrone and I'm here with the Eugene Environmental Film Festival at the headquarters, helping people figure out which venue to go to, which workshops they might like to come see, and um, just giving people directions on how to get around the festival. And uh, what inspired you to help you know, be here and volunteer your time, and, and why is it important to get the public to see these films? Well, there's so many amazing films this time around, and this film festival has just so many amazing workshops. I think it's a great idea for people to come out and support their local community, local artists, and learn what's happening throughout the world as far as environmental crises that are happening so that we can all come together and help each other solve those problems. All right, thanks. My name is Sarah Cantrell, and I'm a social worker and have dedicated much of my professional life to uh, assisting folks in growing their own food in community gardens to increase their healthy food as well as improve their mental health. And just really enjoying the Environmental Film Festival and the importance of looking at environmental issues and how they intersect with social justice all around the world. And uh, my name is Tassia. I'm an artist from uh, Nevada County, California. Came up here because uh, the uh, brain child, or the head of this uh, film festival, um, is a friend of mine, and I wanted to show her some support. We also have a film festival in our community that I think inspired her to bring the same idea to Eugene. And I couldn't be more proud of her for what she's accomplished in her first year. And going back to you again, each one of you, in, in 10 words or less, say something about the festival itself. Why would people want to come here? 
The festival features films from all around the world with filmmakers and other people who've been involved in creating important messages about the environment and humans. And it's just a wonderful event to experience and learn about other places and your own community. And I do, I agree. It, it showcases films by independent make, uh, filmmakers that you would not have the opportunity to see anywhere else. And the messages that they bring forward are, uh, boy, they, they get you. They get you right in the heart. And um, you leave here feeling uplifted and feeling uh, hopeful that we can make a difference in the future. Uh, each of us can participate in a very small way and collectively make a big difference. One of the things that, th that I think is special about the Eugene Environmental Film Festival is uh, how welcoming it is to filmmakers. And uh, one of the things I found uh, most impressive is how welcoming it's been to young filmmakers and making a special place for youth uh, environmental uh, and uh, activist films. And it's been fun to meet some of those people and to interact with them and to see how broadly based the interest in environmental films in Eugene is. Hi guys, I'm Anna, co-director of the Eugene Environmental Film Festival and I just wanted to say thank you guys so much for coming. We had a great turnout. We were super excited to to honor these artists, these filmmakers, and getting their word out to bring everybody out of their own individual silos of environmental work and come together to connect and to uh, to unify in our mission to uh, help the environment. We really had a great time. It was a great learning experience, and we gained so much insight and knowledge into um, the work that's being done and the powerful people that are doing it. So we're really excited about it. We're really enthused and we're optimistic about next year. So thank you everyone who came and also we can't wait to see you next year. Thank you so much. Yeah.